Welcome to this deep dive into fine-tuning modern object detection models, brought to you by Pi3G. We are your trusted experts for AI hardware and software. In this video, we'll walk you through every single step to fine-tune a cutting-edge YOLO 11 model to recognize custom objects. In our case, my dog named Juni. If you're looking to bring AI to your edge devices, enhance your vision pipeline, or just learn how to fine-tune your own YOLO 11 model for a specific task, you're in the right place. Before we jump into the hands-on steps, let's take a moment to understand what fine-tuning really means and why it's the right approach for what we're doing. Fine-tuning means taking a model that was already trained on a large general-purpose dataset like MS Coco and adapting it to a narrow custom task using your own data. In our case, that task is recognizing a single dog, Juni. You could wonder, why not train a model from scratch? Well, training from scratch would mean starting with completely random weights and teaching the model everything from zero. This requires millions of diverse training images, massive compute power, weeks of training time. That's not practical for most users and totally unnecessary here. Instead, fine tuning gives us a head start. YOLO 11 has already learned how to detect basic shapes, edges, object boundaries, and general object features. When we fine tune, we're simply nudging the model to specialize in recognizing our specific object using just a small data set. And here's something really important. Because we're starting from this good baseline, even 50 epochs of training won't completely overwrite or erase what the model already knows. This makes fine tuning very data efficient and stable, especially when combined with a low learning rate. Now, what about model size? We started with the YOLO 11M model, the medium variant, but found that it wasn't ideal for our tiny dataset. It was too complex and the results weren't great. That's why we switched to YOLO 11S, a much smaller, faster version. And for extremely narrow tasks like this, you could even consider YOLO 11N, the nano model. It's the most efficient option. And in many cases, it can match or beat larger models when the task is simple. So now that we understand why and how fine-tuning works, we can get started. Let's start by creating a clean, isolated Python environment to avoid versioning issues. I am using an M4 MacBook, but the process works almost the same on any hardware. Install Python 3.11, then open a terminal and run. This gives you the YOLO 11 framework and the tools needed to prepare and validate your data set. We're using Apple's Metal Backend via the MPS device, which is perfect for Apple Silicon Macs like the M4. Next, you need training data. We chose about 100 pictures of Juni in various lighting conditions, poses, and backgrounds. The more variety, the better. We also added 50 negative images, so images that don't contain Juni, but other things, or even other dogs. To label the images, we use Label Studio, an open source data annotation tool. Start it with Label Studio Start, then open it in your browser and create a new project. Choose an object detection template and upload all your images. You'll then be able to draw bounding boxes around your dog in each image and assign the class name. In our case, just Juni. Don't forget to export your labels once you're done. Export in YOLO format. This gives you an images directory, labels directory, a classes.txt file, and a notes.json file. Now you're ready to process it.
YOLO 11 expects your data to be split into training and validation sets with the labels and images structured like this. To automate that split, we wrote a script that randomly splits the data 80 20ths, copies each image and corresponding label file into the correct folder, creates a data.yaml file which YOLO uses to find your data and define class names. You can find a link to all the files, excluding the dataset in the description. Ultralytics hosts the YOLO 11 family on their hub. We are using the lightweight YOLO 11M model. Note that this is not optimal for our task. Once your dataset is in place, launch training with YOLO task equals detect, mode equals train, model equals YOLO 11M.pt, data equals dataset slash data.yaml epics equals 50, IMGSE equals 640, device equals MPS. That's it. Training will now begin. Now, a word of caution. Small datasets, like our 150 images, pose a challenge. The model can easily overfit. Also, the performance depends a lot on the quality and variety of your data. So how do we know how well the model is doing? We mostly use two metrics, MAP at 0.5 and MAP at 0.5 to 0.95. MAP at 0.5 means mean average precision when IOU which means intersection over union is greater than or equal to 0.5, a moderate overlap. MAP at 0.5 to 0.95 averages over multiple IOU thresholds and is more stringent, generally for MAP at 0.5. Less than 0.3 is bad. Anywhere from 0.3 to 0.6 is okay. Between 0.6 to 0.8 is good, and everything above 0.8 is excellent. Expect lower scores for MAP at 0.5 to 0.95. After a few epics with our small dataset, we were only getting around 0.3 MAP at 0.5. That's not good, but expected. So we moved on to augmentation and a smaller model. To artificially increase the dataset size and reduce overfitting, we used albumentations to perform data augmentation, horizontal flips, brightness and contrast changes, random cropping and scaling and color jitter. We wrote a Python script that loads every image and its bounding box, applies several transformations, and saves the new images into the training folder. Now the results were completely different. After 50 epochs on the augmented dataset, our fine-tuned YOLO 11S model achieved a mean average precision at 0.5 of 0.95 and a mean average precision from 0.5 to 0.95 of 0.71. This is close to state-of-the-art, especially impressive given the dataset size and model footprint. The model was now reliably detecting my dog Juni in new videos. We even wrote a script to run inference on videos. It loads your trained weights, detects the dog in each frame, and writes an annotated output video you can share or test. This entire pipeline, from data collection to training and inference, can be done in under an hour. Of course, it is always a good idea to spend more time to label more data. If you're working on an embedded vision application, need help deploying custom-trained AI models to hardware, or want to streamline annotation and fine-tuning, reach out to us at Pi3G. We offer custom development, consulting, and tailored support for your use case. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into practical AI workflows. And let us know in the comments if you have further questions about object detection. Thanks for watching.